Everybody wants to know what Ghost Stuff is going to do next. Everybody. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Brian Mosalem along with my co host, Justin Thind. You are watching Inside the Locker Room in a taped segment here Tuesday night. Justin, how you doing? Good. How are you, Brian? It's good I'm, to be here. Oh, fantastic. Great to be here. It's great to ha welcome uh, all our Spartans here, and uh, we're extremely, extremely excited. And usually during the month of June, now that the uh, signing period has been moved up, June is one of the most the busiest months as it relates to recruiting. Yeah, this is where uh, the staffs are going to get most of their official visits in. Uh, Michigan State now has 46 prospects that will be officially visiting this month. Some that already have done so. 15 that are going to be doing so this upcoming week that we'll talk about. And some fireworks that have come from the visit weekend already. Fantastic. So June 3rd weekend, recapping the third Mel Tuck. Look at Mel sitting on a couch <laughs> right there. How futon. about that, right? Yep. Futon. I'm sorry. My apologies. It's the college, it's the college. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Recapping the June 3rd weekend. We had a, we had a yeah. heck of a weekend recruiting, huh? Tell, us, a weekend. Bit, tell us, Justin. Talk yeah, to us. So we'll start just diving into some of these guys here. I know uh, Jaden Wayne was one of the guys that got a lot of hype. As you can see there, that was the picture with the Grand Wagoneer. Uh, which is a over $110,000 vehicle for those that don't know. So Who paid for that? <laughs> uh, so they have um, Jaden Wayne posted up right there next to Coach Tuck. And uh, he's a guy that uh, talked to Corey Robinson, gave him great quotes on the one you see up on the screen as Coach Tucker is a great coach. I could see myself playing for him. I definitely will be back. And with guys of this caliber, these five-star kind of guys, simply you want to secure a return visit. And Michigan State did a good job doing that. He's one of those guys that can come in, play right away. One of those guys that can transform the defense. Uh, those guys that you can go ahead and compete for national titles with. And with the development that Brandon Jordan would be giving him, uh, he would thrive here in East Lansing. The next guy that comes to mind is Jalen Braxton. He's a Texas four-star cornerback. And you see him posted up with Coach Tuck and the Wagoneer there. And he's a guy that had a great visit. Um, one of the best visits out of everyone that came up this weekend. And um, Why, what, did, what did he say to you guys? He basically told us that the staff is not one that you can compete with uh, across the nation. Huh, interesting. And uh, we heard um, just in general, he had a great visit weekend and uh, hopefully he'll be coming to a decision at the end of this month. And uh, Jelani Thurman, that's a guy that Michigan State wants really badly. He's a tight end that could come in and play right away. His mom talked to me, and I did an interview uh, with him and his mom, and she had great things to say about the coaches, great things to say about the staff. And in, in general, this family just loves what the staff is all about. They love the players panel that where they got to go ahead and talk to current players. They gave them unfiltered feedback on the coaches. That really speaks to the culture of the program. And uh, mom's from Michigan, Jackson native. She played for the Detroit Shock in the WNBA. Family would be very comfortable up here. Michigan State will be fighting with Auburn and Alabama there, uh, maybe some others as well. And then the five-star, DJ Hicks. He's the guy that everybody was asking about, what he was all about. And uh, there you see him posted up with his whole family. His dad came on this trip. He wasn't here for the, for the spring game, so you can tell that they were really, really trying to figure out what Michigan State's all about this time. He's another guy that had a great experience here. Coach Brandon Jordan, Coach Coleman, Coach Vickerson, and all of these guys had a huge impact on DJ Hicks. He went on to post about this Michigan State visit for three, four days after the visit ended, and he is going to be back if I had to guess. So, like, what, what are you being your experience in this field? What are you seeing this year different at Michigan State that, that you have not seen in the past with Coach Tucker? Right. I am seeing a higher level of talent in town. I am seeing uh, kids much more receptive to Michigan State that previously weren't on the radar, guys like DJ Hicks, uh, these sort of guys. And um, more than ever, uh, I guess what makes Michigan State unique, not only compared to years past at Michigan State, but across the nation, is the coaches here have built a culture where the current players are doing a lot of helping in recruiting. 
and when you have a situation where current players are behind closed doors giving unfiltered positive feedback about the coaching staff when they don't have to that tells you about the buy-in that the players have in the program and what the coaching staff is about behind the scenes because players don't lie to other players they know that their money's on the line in the future in the nfl they know that their futures are on the line and they're not going to give bad advice to recruits even if they're, it's to come to the school they're at so to get positive feedback from the current players that had a huge impact on some parents of recruits and you can see that in the quotes we put out. But, yeah, just an overall culture that's at Michigan State right now, that's one of the biggest things that I took away from my coverage this weekend. And so when you're talking to these parents and to the recruits, like how are they viewing Mel Tucker? Yeah. Because Mel, Mel's got, like, this national brand. He's got yeah. the swag going on. What is what is what are you what kind of feedback are you getting? Yeah, I think uh, Jaden Wayne's dad said it best. Uh, Corey Robinson talked to him and basically Jaden Wayne's dad said they're not selling a dream. He, he sat across from Coach oh, Tucker interesting. and uh, they said that they're about the now. They're not selling a dream. And at the end of the day, they're genuine. So everything that, that they saw from the Zooms and from phone calls and stuff. When they sit in front of these coaches, they look them in the eye, they shake their hand. The energy that they get from Coach Tucker and his staff is the, is the point that's been repeated to me in my conversations and Corey and all the staff at 24-7. It's what they're seeing is, is not fake. What they're seeing is something of substance, and that is a recurring theme with this staff. That's, that's just so interesting to me. So we, we had kids come in, young men come in from yeah. Dallas or from Texas. Yeah. Washington. Yep. What other states that we had? Georgia, uh, Tennessee. Um, there were there are several states. Uh, I think 15 states this month that will be represented. Uh, so yeah, it's not anything just here maximizing Ohio, Michigan, things like that. They're national, and these kids are showing up. So it's it's a strategy that has paid off so far. So I've never seen this when it comes to Michigan State. I mean, we're yeah. becoming a national brand. I'm seeing a lot of young men when they're they're down to their top five yeah their top seven you know you're seeing michigan state's decal logo in there with the likes of alabama right the likes of uh other schools that uh georgia that are very prominent and and like what does that speak to the culture that mel tucker is building up in east lansing yeah when you have kids that have you up there with uh georgia alabama lsu like these previous national title winners that tells you that your perception of your program is different than what, ha what it has been in the past. Uh, we've talked a lot about this in recent weeks is these kids can only get so many official visits. Every kid is limited to five official visits. For you to be in that company and to be getting visits from kids that hold you in that regard and choose you with one of their limited spots, first of all, the interest is genuine. Uh, it's a concrete barometer of your perception of the program even before some of them commit. And it tells you that Michigan State they may not have arrived yet. Obviously, more winning needs to be done. But they have moved the timetable much further along and faster than anyone really realized was possible. It's, act it's, it's been very interesting to watch. And um, really, you see Coach Tucker really focusing on the brand, right. the university, understanding today's young man, yeah. understanding what, um, what recruiting does, the portal does, understanding the, the likes of NIL and – you know, from all that I've been able to gather, that he's been able to really connect with the parents mm -hmm. of these young men. Now, is that what you're seeing as well? Yeah, definitely. Like um, I referenced Jaden Wayne's dad and uh, DJ Hicks's dad gave Steve Wiltfong some great quotes in the same regard of everyone sits in front of the coaching staff, sits in front of Mel Tucker, and they don't sense a, a hint of just a fake aura. Everything is genuine. And that's the perception that the staff has. And that's what they've worked on. That's, that just comes from their personality. And that's what people are seeing uh, on campus. And that's why Michigan State had a high hit rate last year. A lot of these people that visited, they committed. Michigan State had a streak where every major visit weekend they had, they landed at least one commit from. And this time around, it's a little trickier because you're up there with some higher level kids. But that's a recurring theme I expect from this, from this program, where you can close on kids because of what you present yourselves as on the official visits and everything about it is real so like in the past nil or in the past i'm sorry facilities um you know what can you do for their education what could you do to further their their uh development as a person has been the focus right right now what are you hearing is it mostly nil driven 
Um, what, are, what, what are most of the young men and their parents talking about? So when it comes to um, their feedback and official visits and stuff, uh, the, the biggest thing I always hear about is the coaches that are like their position coaches and how they can develop them. So this weekend when we're interviewing guys like Madden Sanker and Sham Umaroff, um, and, and obviously the defensive line prospects that we've been talking about, they talk about Brandon Jordan and his ability to get him to the NFL. They talk about Coach Cap and his ability to develop kids. And Mel Tucker, who's recruiting the corners himself, uh, with obviously help from Harlan Barnett and uh, Jaron Duhart and other guys on the staff. But when you have Chance Rucker, Jalen Brax, and these guys talking to Coach Tucker and know he's developing them, that's the central theme I got from this whole weekend is the coaches that are going to be developing these guys is the number one takeaway. I'm sure they like the NIL opportunities that would be um, available to them if they were to choose Michigan State. But immediately after these visits, it's about the coaches that, that can develop them. So it's really about not right now, what can I get now? It's about preparing me for the yeah. next level. And I think Coach Tucker's targeting those kind of guys that have that kind of long-term thinking. Um, they're not just looking for the guys that are going to be influenced yeah. easily by the quick, yeah, yeah. quick penny short wise, term. pound foolish, right? Yeah. About like Nick Saban said the other day, his first round draft picks have averaged one point. Yeah, they've earned one point seven billion. Yeah, that's his number. Mm -hmm. it's, a, I mean, it's a great selling tool, right? <laughs> right. I mean, but but yeah, that's being developed when you get the likes of Brandon Jordan, yeah. and especially you got Mel Tucker coaching. Uh, yeah. The corners, right. that's something that uh, I think is a major selling point. Yeah. So we did get one commit this weekend, though. We did. We sure did. There he is, Chance Rucker. Uh, he's a guy that came on two unofficial visits prior to this one. Uh, didn't post a lot about them. He just liked to keep his recruitment um, under wraps. Uh, didn't do a lot of showing on social media, but he came up here three times now. Just loved everything on about his own the staff. Dime? Uh, twice on his own dime and now the official yeah exactly wow. so his interest was always genuine even though it wasn't loud and he came up here this time verified his interest that he had after his last two two visit weekends and now is the first kid to commit here after these june official visits and he's a texas native so michigan state just landed a texas four-star cornerback which is a big deal and he's a guy that, just looking at his tape, you immediately notice his ability to keep up with guys downfield, stride for stride. He has great speed. You also see his speed in his kick return for touchdowns. Just an explosive athlete. And he takes away the receiver's uh, inside-out cuts. He has great fluidity with his hips, backpedal, all the tools you need out of a corner. Just a very, very, very impressive pickup for Michigan State and Mel Tucker here. When was the last time we picked up a corner from the state of texas of this caliber i i don't know you would have to help me i don't know if my memory goes that far back <laughs> i don't know if my memory goes that far back <laughs> I, I mean it's it's yeah. it's it's quite quite the scene what's happening on the recruiting trail yep yeah absolutely so yeah and like i said jalen braxton's another four-star corner from texas that really enjoyed his time here we'll see what happens there but you could be looking at a situation possibly of where you could land two four-star cornerbacks from texas that visited on the same day Tell you what, Chance, welcome to the family, young man. Yep. Welcome to Spartan Nation. We're excited to have you. We're excited for you to be a Spartan dog. And what do you forecast in the future? Do you see anything uh, uh, with this next weekend? We got another big weekend coming up here. Yep. Yep. Some right? could argue I this mean, is the big, biggest. Big, 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 big yep. weekend coming up here. This whole month is big, right? Previewing the upcoming weekend. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about who's coming. Who yeah. you think's coming to MSU? Why? Yeah. What? So uh, the the screenshot you see on the screen right now is kind of the top half of the visitors list this weekend. It's headlined by the five star that everyone knows all about, Samson Okunlola, uh, and then right underneath Caleb Presley, and then right underneath Enau Etta. Those three uncommitted guys have loved Michigan State for a while. Um, all three of them have taken at least one trip to Michigan State on their own dime. Caleb Presley, back when Michigan State beat Michigan at home in the rivalry game. Enow took some this spring. Samson visited this spring. But, yeah, so a guy like Samson Okunlola, he can immediately play right away and start for Michigan State at left tackle. Uh, Michigan State probably will have the need for that next year, too, depending on what happens with Jarrett Horst. So big-time prospect there. But Caleb Presley, a, a high four-star from the Pacific Northwest, he's one of the most prized recruits uh, in the nation that Michigan State's after. Enau Etta, everyone knows about how he has a lot of interest in Michigan State and how the staff is going to look to close here in the coming months. 
And then uh, Andrew DePape is here, ace recruiter. So we're going to get to see him kind of in his natural element of trying to bring in more kids to join the class here. Ryan Gates, who's committed to LSU. Um, he has always said that his interest in Michigan State is high, and uh, he is going to visit despite being committed to LSU. Jamal Anderson Jr., who is the son of Jamal Anderson Sr., who is the mm. uh, inventor of the Dirty Bird uh, over yeah. there for the Falcons. Atlanta. Yeah. And Jordan Hall coming back once again, the IMG Academy linebacker that enjoyed his uh, spring uh, visit here and hopefully will enjoy this one. Um, then you kind of have the list continue, and that just kind of puts into perspective how many people are visiting. Uh, right here you see uh, Terrence Green, who is a defensive lineman from Texas. Uh, in a usual year, he would have tons of hype. And this time, I know he, he's lower down on the list if you look at it by rankings. Very impressive player there. You have Jaden Bonsu, who, yes, he's a three-star, but Ohio State wants him really bad right now. And he's a kid that um, – actually, I see he's a composite four-star now. But, yeah, he's a, he's a kid that Ohio State wants really bad, and he's at the top of Michigan State's board as far as safeties go, him, Elliott Washington, and others. And King Mack, another four-star right there, safety. Uh, between Michigan State and Penn State. We'll see Michigan State, uh, what they kind of like uh, from him this weekend on his visit and how hard they want to push there moving forward. Brandon Parachek and Kedrick Risano, two four-star current commits that will help Andrew DePape try to add on to the class. Yeah, so we have three commits yes. here to help us recruit. Absolutely. And then Clay Whedon, uh, another one of those guys that in other years would have a ton of hype. He's a guy that also has a four-star ranking and is down from Florida. You can never have enough four-star Florida players, that's for sure. And then you have Colton Hood and Vance Bolliard. Uh, Colton Hood is a guy that they're willing to take at cornerback right now. So despite the three-star ranking, he's a guy that Coach Tucker personally likes a lot. And Vance Bolliard is, a, is another tight end. I know Jelani Thurman was here this weekend. And uh, Vance is another kid that they're looking at at tight end. So all in all... I would say that personally, this is the biggest weekend of June. I know that the last weekend they had the five stars and whatnot. I think this weekend they have more of their top targets here, and it's going to be a big weekend. We're going to have coverage on 24-7 as always, and uh, just excited to see what it yields. So tell me, who are their, their top targets? I mean, who realistically are we looking at as uh, yeah. potential so Spartans and... You know, you're, you just kind of, you know, the scuttle about the feedback that you're hearing. Yeah, so um, as far as uh, this weekend goes, uh, Samson Okunlola is, is as high of a priority as a, a prospect could be for, for a university. Caleb Presley, he could, if he were, wanted to commit, Michigan State would jump for joy and take his equipment at the spot. He's as high on the cornerback board as anybody. Um, and then you kind of just start going through down the list. And like I said, Jaden Bonsu, I know he's not the highest ranked four star. Ohio State wants him bad. Michigan State wants him bad. He's all the way up there on the safety board alongside Elliott Washington. And yeah, this weekend they have, they have four or five guys, Jordan Hall, right all the way at the top of the linebacker board. So a lot of guys that like Michigan State a lot, I would say every single one of those kids I just mentioned have Michigan State in their top three at the lowest. Um, in, in some regards, like Jordan Hall, I would say top two at the lowest. And it's just uh, an exciting time to see what the staff can do to move the needle forward with them. And it's hard to predict right now of who's going to be going to Michigan State out of these guys because they have more visits to take. And at the end of the day, these are 17, 18 year olds that every day they feel a different way. Yeah, right. But right now, Michigan State's in a great spot with a lot of, lot of guys at the top of their board. I never thought I would be talking on a talk <laughs> show about 17 and 18 year olds. Never in a million years. Um, but I guess this is the lifeline yeah. of college football. Yeah. And. As, uh, as Coach Tucker said, we're going to close the gap on Ohio State three ways. Recruiting, recruiting, recruiting. Yeah. So yeah. very interesting times. For it's sure. amazing. Yeah. Speaking so, of Ohio State and recruiting. Speaking <laughs> of the Buckeyes, how about that? Ryan Day throwing out. Said he believes it'll take $13 million from his local business community to keep the Buckeyes roster intact very interesting comment um he said the top tier quarterback requires two million in nil elite edge rushers require one million top offensive tackles require one million 
They said if you're not in the game when the players ask, you're done. Right. Do we believe that necessarily? Um, I do believe um, to a certain extent that you have to have um, or your, your boosters, your, your donor base has to have something set up uh, at that point where it looks tangible, it looks feasible. You can't just be sitting around saying, oh, eventually um, the, the community will have NIL. You definitely do need to be proactive in that regard for sure. Um, as for some of these price tags, I've heard price tags all acro across the nation in the 2022 class. I have a good feel for what these kids are going for. I would say that in, in some cases he's right. I think the edge rushers, uh, offensive tackle, some of that is, is correct. I don't know if the quarterback one is, is as on point. Quarterbacks are hard to project sometimes. They have a, a high flop rate. And I know, Nick, or I guess an unnamed quarterback um, that's committed to Tennessee, uh, possibly, uh, um, allegedly, has gotten $8 million. Uh, but I think that is, that is a little high. Uh, I'm not yeah. buying it. Yeah, so, I'm not buying it. I'm, yeah. I'm you know, th that message was for his donors, yeah. his alumni, yeah, to pony up, and and it's also an excuse for going nine and three, yeah, and losing to Michigan State. Yeah, that's 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 my take on it. I don't think you need that kind of money. Yeah, I think programs like you know Tennessee and, and some of these programs, you know, yeah, the, the used to be's. Yeah, you know, trying to uh, get back in the game might pay yeah. eight million for a quarterback, or yeah. so they say. But yeah. that's not. Yeah, that's, thirteen million seems very high. Yeah, that's not um, realistic. I don't believe the twenty-five million that Slice Bread said that Jimbo had. No. I don't think that's the case. I don't either. Um, I do think elite edge rushers are going for very high amounts of money, but the total number of thirteen million, I don't buy. No, neither do I. I think that's number one to get your alumni and community ready to mm -hmm. pony up and number two yeah to to, to create a built-in excuse right i mean quite frankly but 13 million is not going to be the number because nfl programs nfl teams invest the millions of dollars of research in top five picks right and they're 50 50 at best yes you know this market will correct itself right these guys taking eight million dollar flyers on quarterbacks 18 year old quarterbacks you know, when, when a couple of these yeah. bust, it, the market will correct itself. Yeah. Like, I, like I've said in the past, I believe that it's going to be a, yeah. a salary cap driven. Yeah. You know, that's going to be created by the power yeah. 65. But those numbers in my eyes are just let's see. Munchable. Let's see if people are going to scenic Knoxville and scenic College Station when the return on investment on these. Deals that aren't happening. College Station is scenic. Yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> let let's see if the return on investment element here ever changes the funding that they're allegedly not getting. <laughs> Knoxville, you can make a case for. Okay. You have um, the reserve, the preserve. You have uh, Nashville is close by. Nashville, yeah. one of those mountains. I was uh, the um, God, the I Smoky forgot. Mountains. Smokies, yes. Yeah. Smokies. I'm not a big fan of Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Oh, though. I love Gatlinburg. Overrated place. Outstanding. Yeah. But, you know, College Station, that's not exactly utopia. So yeah. we're going to we're going to find out. But uh, ROI. it's interesting, his uh, Ryan Day's comments yeah. and what he's setting up his alumni for. So, yeah, very, very interesting. We got good news to report, though, in East Lansing. East Lansing, Michigan, Thomas Kelly returns home to work. For Coach Izzo, play that video for us. Also turns it over. Off to Kelly. Dribble, drive, spin, layup up there. Good. Well, it's going to be great to welcome a former Spartan. I should say an all-time Spartan. Thomas Kelly, who was here when I recruited him, but was here my first year as head coach. So it brings back a lot of great memories of the past. TK is one of those guys that is loved by everyone at Michigan State. I think all the former players He's an incredibly hardworking guy. He came here, got his degree, moved on, went over to Europe, and then came back and was a GA later on in his life just to get into the coaching field. So I must say that I'm excited anytime I can get a former player back on the staff. But having a guy like Thomas Kelly, who has been a big part of what we've done here, now to help us take this thing one farther step and get that second national championship. Get that second natty. I like that hire. What do you think, Justin? 
Yeah, he's the guy that wore the jersey. He's the guy that um, is obviously uh, a good hire from Western Michigan. And the, the thing that kind of sticks out to me is Coach Kelly, he was hired first uh, five, six years ago by Coach Steve Hawkins. Then when Coach Hawkins left, Clayton Bates retained him. Then DJ got the job, has years, decades of experience, could have chosen anyone, once again retained Coach Kelly. So he was set to work for his third coaching staff at Western Michigan. Unless you're a lifer um, of decades at a university, you will be hard pressed to find an assistant that gets retained by three coaching staffs at a given school. And very yeah, rare. Right. So at the end of the day, wore the jersey, was obviously very valuable at Western Michigan. Uh, he's personable. I've heard from sources that have known uh, Coach TK from his, his time at Michigan State as a GA and before that say that players will put everything on the line for him. He's somebody that on a personal level that they really, really, really buy in on. So uh, everything that I have heard seems to say that this will pan out. So will TK get in the portal, get on social media? Will he do those things? Will he embrace NIL for coach? We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Will he, TK, you got some work to do. You got to convince the old man. That's the route we got to go. So we're going we're gonna to try and gra grab him on here to get on the show. But uh, TK, I believe, was on my back end. I graduated in 96. I see. I think he started, you know, he was a freshman maybe when yeah. I, I met him. But uh, happy to have T. I I can't believe how fast time flies. Happy to have TK back. and uh, He uh, played in 99, right? Yeah, I graduated in 96. So okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was one in 99. So, You're one. Yeah. I don't yeah. remember the playing career, yeah, unfortunately. I, don't, I, I mean, I'm, you know, <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel one. I feel your age, but <laughs> it is what it is. But I think it's a good move by a coach. Yeah. I think, I think w given this uh, generation, right, this era yeah. of college basketball, yeah. I think TK will uh, – will be there to transform MSU basketball and, yeah. and focus on, you know, where we are in this yeah. cycle. So yeah. it'll be a uh, yeah. it'll be very interesting. Yeah. I think coach Montgomery uh, has been a great hire uh, after coach Izzo brought him back. And um, this is another coach that he, he kind of uh, earned his stripes here in the Mac and he's, he's younger, uh, younger than a lot of coaches out there. That was a priority for coach Izzo this time around. I know all three of his finalists, were um, at uh, this age or lower. So you can kind of see what the vision was there. And uh, I think uh, it could be a good hire. Very good hire. Absolutely. Congratulations, congratulations, TK. We're going to try and get you on this show. And congratulations to Flozell Adams. My uh, line mate played next to me. Flozell Adams, one of three former Spartans on the ballot. For the College Football Hall of Fame 2023 class, Flozell, um, along with Daryl Rogers and Gideon Smith. I'll tell you, this is special to me because I played next to Flozell. Yeah, you gave him all the tips and tricks that Taught got him there. him everything he knows, <laughs> you know, told him what to do every play. And now he's in the college uh, ballot Hall of Fame, and yeah. I'm on a podcast yeah. with you. So. Yeah. Somebody's done something right. <laughs> yeah, good job, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Big flow. Big flow. Proud of you. Happy for you. Congratulations. Um, when is that voting? Do we know? That I am not sure. Uh, it is in my email. I will figure that out. Probably should know that. But you know how I'm voting. Just. Do you say. have a vote? Um, I believe so. Not okay. sure. Didn't read, didn't read past <laughs> the names. Uh, I'll get to the bottom of it. <laughs> <laughs> well deserved. I mean, played what I think twelve or thirteen years in a league. Uh, twelve with Dallas, I think one with Philly or uh, uh, Pittsburgh, and uh, well deserved. Yeah, big flow. You know, he also was the lead uh, gift on the North End Zone, uh, a renova renovation in honor of his mom. God rest her soul. So, uh, Flozell, congratulations. Uh, to uh, your nomination or, or being on the ballot. And thank you for yeah. everything that you have done for Michigan State University. And uh, we wish you all the best. If I had a vote, you'd get it, brother. That's all. If I had a vote. Congratulations. Absolutely. Now to our guest. Here is our guest. We got the savant. 
<laughs> the enigma, the <laughs> hire that everybody wants to hear from, every recruit wants to hear from, every NFL player wants to be coached. Brandon Jordan, coach, how you doing, brother? I'm good. How y'all doing? What's up, Justin? What's up, Brian? How y'all doing? We're doing very good. Thank you great for joining us. Great to have us. you here, coach. Great, Appreciate great. Y'all for having me. Appreciate y'all for having me. We love having you, man. How's it going over there? It's going good, man. In the middle of the grind. Middle of the grind, <laughs> recruiting grind, man. First time I'm doing it, but I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. It's a process. I love it. I love what I'm seeing with it. They teaching me the ropes and we going. Yeah, and I know the uh, fan base is loving it too, what, what you're doing over there. Um, I guess, yeah, like you said, first time doing it, first time in the grind. So kind of the first question I would ask you is, when you took the job, um, I'm sure you had certain expectations, what would be easy, what would be hard, but like, what's something that surprised you, whether in a good way, whether maybe you required a longer learning curve, just what's one thing about the job that you kind of were like, wow, this is kind of surprising? I don't know, man. Um, I really was a really prepare for it i mean right. uh just was being at austin p at uh for a couple couple years back um but just really probably to real the, the recruiting um just how much it is 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 a grind every day you try to contact these guys every day try to stay connected with them and just really just sell yourself sell the program but it's been easy man i've been having good mentors here to been teaching me a lot uh saeed khalif uh coach coleman uh coach Hazleton, coach tucker they taught me a lot about how to do this, how to conduct, uh, conduct myself and the way to do it. So, man, it, they made it easy for me. So it really haven't been too hard. Um, I've been having a good tutelage. Great to hear. You know, you know you're, you're right, because the recruiting is the new thing, right? It's, it's, uh, if you're not used to this space, it's, uh, it's, it's 24-7, 365. It's a grind. It's nonstop. Yeah. And... Um, do you notice how much recruits have gravitated towards you? Have you noticed how much that you've helped the program or, you know, young men want to come play for you because of your reputation? I mean, do you realize how much your reputation has helped the program? Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I, it's just I try to be humble about it. But, uh, yeah, a lot of these guys, these kids come to me, man, and they ask me about the guys I train and, and what I do to help develop the guys and, how I could help them out and, and what, what how they could see themselves working with me every single day. And the thing about it is, like uh, we was talking, is that a lot of these guys I work with in the NFL, I work with them probably three days a week uh, for a month or two months. But coming here is very special because I get to work with you every single day. Uh, get the work in, never. We get to watch film. We get to develop. I get to correct you right away. We can make uh, co quick corrections. And, and that, that's just special right here. So that's one reason I did want to do college so I could really develop a guy and bring him up from a freshman year to senior year or, mm. soft, or junior year and see how much he developed, man. It's, I think it's going to be scary, man, just for the guys yeah. that do end up <laughs> joining, this, joining this program because it's going to be everyday, everyday work when guys that been with me just for three days a week and going to the NFL and putting up numbers that they never put up. So it's yeah. a, I'm yeah. excited for it. For sure. And I know that uh, Coach BT can't talk about any of the recruits and whatnot, but just so the people that are listening that might not follow recruiting closely, within a month of Coach taking over as uh, the pass rush specialist at Michigan State, he landed uh, the highest ranked out of state commit in seven years for Michigan State. So it's substance. It's not just hype. It's not just social media marketing and whatnot. But um, I guess what kind of goes hand in hand with that question is, Coach, the reception uh, that you've gotten from Michigan State Twitter and just the the hype you've seen around uh, helping your recruiting efforts in some cases with recruits, other times just highlighting all your accomplishments in the NFL. What can you say about in the time you've been here, just the support you've seen from uh, people around the program, uh, like, for example, social media? Man, Michigan State fans, the best fans out there. Um, I noticed that when I got here, uh, when I first announced that I was getting hired here, I, my Twitter blew up. Uh, it was crazy. But even like the kids, the guys I'm recruiting, they even mentioned it, man. They there's no fans out there that blow their things, they blow their social media up the way they uh, Michigan State fans blow the social media. Up. So that gave give them a feel of how much love they would get when they come to Lansing, mm -hmm. East Lansing, and and when they play for Michigan State, and they can imagine if they're blowing their Twitter up just for getting an offer or getting recruited, or coming on a visit, if they make a game win the sack or do whatever to win, help us win the national championship and win a Big Ten, how much love they will get. So it's a big it's a big help for recruiting. 
You know, um, Coach, you've been in different circles that I've spoken to have been r referred to as a savant, somebody who's brilliant, like quiet brilliance. And you have, uh, you're an artist, the way you teach. Why come work for Coach Tucker? Why enter the college game? Why come to Michigan State when you got a pretty nice side gig going on? Yeah. It's it just coming to Coach Tucker. When I came and interviewed here, uh, seen a vision, I sat down with Coach Tucker, sat down with Coach Hazelton, sat down with the staff. But when I sat down with Coach Tucker, I was able to just see the vision. Um, he told me what, what he was thinking of, see how he see this program going, and then just talking ball with him, just seeing how brilliant of, uh, of a football coach he is and how brilliant of a recruiter he is and he how he could help me become a better coach because I'm still, I'm still new. I'm still young in this game and I have mm -hmm. a lot, a lot, a real lot to of improvement. And just knowing to learn from one of the best defensive minds in the game, uh, learn from one of the best head coaches in the game and just sit down in a room with him every day, being in the defensive staff with him and be able to pick his brain. And he teach me how to carry myself, how to how to go my day to day li uh, life, day to day uh, work in the office, how to break down film, how to develop these guys like it just helped me out. So it was a no brainer. Me coming when I came here it was a no brainer just to sit down with him and, and talk it and, and show what he could do for me. For sure. And coach, uh, in the time you've been here so far, you've had one uh, spring camp under your belt. Uh, I know you're, you're new here and all the guys have a lot of potential and stuff, but I kind of just wanted to ask you, what were your overarching thoughts about the, the talent in front of you that you're coaching this year? Uh, just your thoughts on the front seven, what you're excited about, what you think they can accomplish and just your overall temperature check on what you're working with. Man, the first thing, the first thing I say about these guys, they're workers. And that, that's probably one of the biggest compliments you could have as a, as a football player is you're a worker. Um, the, from what these guys work and they want, they hungry. They always want the extra work. They always want to watch extra film. They always want to find out what can make them better. And they always work on finishing. They finish mm. every single drill we do, we finish. They come relentless like how Coach Tucker talk. They they live that. They live to be relentless. Every rep we do, every time we do a drill, every time we're in a meeting room, even talking about football, they're relentless about it and want to be the best group. So that's the best compliment you could have of a group. From the guys that I work with in the NFL, that's the best guys in the NFL, the guys that are relentless and want to be great. Uh, even Von Miller. Uh, want to be coached. When I worked with Von Miller, the first thing he said the first day I worked with him is let coach me. Don't don't let me just get away with anything. Coach me and let me be better. And and that's how these guys are. They want to get coached. They want to be better. Mm. They want to be the best best group in the country. That is fascinating to me. You know, uh, Coach, you got 195 NFL clients. I saw a stat the other day. Um, during the 21 stats accumulated during the, the 2021 season, that uh, your clients had over 4,400 tackles, nearly 400 sacks, six Pro Bowl roster spots, over 80, 80 playoff roster um, uh, uh, spots. Like, how does that make you feel? I mean, that's a hell of an accomplishment, yeah. Coach. It, it, to be honest with you, it's surreal, man. I never really – That's when crazy. When I seen that stat, it just – That's it, nuts. It, Come it, on, it Coach. It blew me away. And – and the way I work, though, I, I'm so focused on getting better. Like, I never really just sat down and and just admire my work and admire what the guy is doing because I'm always looking to work more and get better at what I'm doing. And the guys I work with, I'm focused on them, getting them, getting them better. Um, so, but when I seen that stat, it, it was crazy. It was crazy just to know that most of the guys, a lot of these guys, the top guys in the NFL come work with me and want to get better and, and get crafting and, and they've been getting better and been getting big contracts and things like that. So it's a blessing, it's surreal uh, to see that. And I'm just excited, I'm excited. So when they get a big contract, like do you get a text telling you, hey, thank you, <laughs> yeah. I close it. Because I recruit, you know, these, you know, we got we got kids coming here want to come to the league. When, well, like, do they do they text you and say, "Hey, coach, thank you, brother. Brother, I got you, man. I appreciate yeah. you." Yeah, a lot, like a lot of guys. That's I'm probably one of the first guys before they, the, it get announced. They they let me know they about to sign a contract, man. They appreciate what I'm doing. Uh, they thank me for helping them out on the way, and that they just starting. Like we, they the most of those guys after they contract, they want to get back in the lab and get and get better. You know what I mean? And more. So and it's it was a blessing, man, just to to see that, and they feel like I made it when they, when them boys signed those contracts. You know, good. And good, I see, good. and when I did uh, CBS, CBS came did an article when we had the pass rush retreat, 
And with one of my guys, John Franklin Meyer, he just signed for $14 million a hold year. Hold on. Hold that, on. That's my guy, Robert Sala. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's my guy. Yes, that's sir. My, that's yes, my, sir. That's my, I've known him. Coach Sala's been uh, my neighbor, known him since he was. I was just going to ask you about JFM right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's, J- that's, uh, that's my, Robert's JFM, coach my loves boy, him. man. Coach that's loves my boy. him, man. He's a worker. He's a worker. And, and, and that's all. And, and that's all he knows is work. Sometimes JFM, when we was in Houston, he'll go from a, tra- uh, a strength workout to a, to me on the field to back to another yoga workout. He grinds three, three, th- uh, three workouts a day, um, putting it in. And, and that's that's the main thing that I want these young kids to know and guys that come work for me is that it, it's not going to come easy. You got to work for it. You got to want to be the best. You want to be determined to be the best. And, and then I'm going to help you get there. That's awesome. Yeah. So, Coach, when you're working with these NFL guys, what's kind of the schedule now that you're a full-time college head coach like or assistant coach? Like, are you kind of working with them during the off season? Is it maybe even during the season on the off days? Like, what's that dynamic? Like, how are you balancing it? What's that kind of looking like? Uh, it's all season work. So okay. those guys come up to me now. They come up to Lansing, East Lansing, and get that work in. Um, so whenever I get free time out of uh, practice and, and uh, film, uh, we'll get some work in for probably an hour, two hours. We'll go in there and watch film with the guy, uh, NFL guys, uh, get the same resume. So being at East Lansing is like having a facility here for those guys. Um, the, the the Michigan State staff, strength staff, uh, um, training staff, they all take care of my guys and and make them feel like family. So they love it when they come down here, man. Like when they came for the retreat, man, they was ready to come back. So uh, it was a blessing, man, just to have a great support that Michigan State given. I mean, I think that's just, I mean, and and listen, what you have done is remarkable, but you know, when you look at Coach Tucker and the way he's built the program, right? I mean, Saeed has got a title general manager. Mm-hmm. We have a, a defensive ends coach that's a pass rush specialist because, mm-hmm. you know, edge is a very special position. Very, very, and it's a premium position. Like, these are outside the box type titles, hires. You know, like I said uh, earlier, when everybody's playing checkers, Mel is playing chess. Mm-hmm. And you ended up at Michigan State. How come no other school said to you, hey, come on in? Let's hire you. Come train all your NFL players here because we want future recruits to see this. Yeah. I don't know. It, 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 that used to boggle my mind also, man. Um, <laughs> wondering. Man, I used to be like, man, what I'm doing wrong? But yeah, uh, right? just, for Coach, just for Coach Tucker to get that, take that chance, um, it, it shows what he's doing here. Uh, he, he's getting guys ready for the NFL. And this is the type of title general manager and password specialist is that they have in the NFL. So he has that vision of making this NFL NFL ready place and getting those guys ready for the NFL and that's how he working. This is this a top class organization. Um he's he's training guys to be ready for the NFL. So um he took a chance on me, man. Hopefully it pays off on him. Uh and we could we could work. Win us a yeah. win a Big Ten championship. Yeah. Well my last question from you, Brandon, is you're gonna be your, it's gonna be your first season um as the FBS assistant coach. You're gonna be on the sidelines. What are you looking forward to most for the regular season uh, in 2022? Man, I'm just looking forward to the season, man. Uh, first game, first game, Western Michigan, uh, just to see what my guys do. I yeah. want to see how they grow, um, grow week to week, how we go uh, get better at it, how I'm going to be able to prepare them. Uh, I can't wait, man, just to see those guys on the field and, and see the crowd react when we get a game winning sack or we get that sack and we break that record. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I got two more questions for you. So, you're, you coach 195 NFL players, then you got Marco Coleman, and you got Vic inside with, uh, you know, dozens of years of NFL experience. It, have you ever seen a D-line staff that stacked? Never. Never. I, like I said, I told those guys when we first got here, it's, it's the dream team. Um, it's, I'm learning every day from those guys, Marco and Vic, uh, Kevin Vickerson, like, it's a dream team right here. So there's no better place for a, a recruit to come and get uh, developed and then have some guys that, that played in the NFL for a long time and teach those guys the ways of how to be a professional, how to get yourself ready for when football is over and be able to prepare yourself to be at life after football. So it's it's a, a dream team. I'll tell you what, I'm, I mean, everybody, the fan base is so excited about you. They're so excited about you. They're so excited about Tuck and what he's building. And uh, when you could put 195 NFL players on your resume, 
you know, that, that speaks for itself, you know, because I was looking at JFM today, and I'm like, man, he just signed a big deal. He might get moved inside. If he gets moved inside, we're still coaching him? Man, no doubt. That's my dude, man. So <laughs> I, I, I'm going I'm to get it right. And be honest with you, he's he going to make money wherever he's at, man. He's yeah, a, he's yeah, a yeah. Prime time <laughs> cash Yeah. <laughs> because we just got that kid out of Florida State. We got a couple, you know, but but they love him. I mean, yes, he, you're good for him. I'm so happy. He had a great yeah. year. And that's great to see. Uh, we'll we'll got one more question for you. We'll okay. let you go. Uh, Who's the who is the your favorite or your best favorite NFL p- prospect coach guy you coached? Who works the hardest? Man, y'all gonna hate me for this one. <laughs> no, I know no, who it is. Don't say I no. know who it is. No, <laughs> hey, we're, we're hang up on you right now, no, Brian. It's a y'all recruiting pitch. It's a recruiting pitch. Say, I'm gonna let you do my no, second. No, no, say best. it. It's okay. <laughs> it's a recruiting pitch. Go ahead. It's all right. I'm gonna give my second best. My second best, it probably be. It's one of the guys. It's my guy. It's my guy that I started with. He when I first started training, we was at um used to train at the playground. Used to train in uh Harrell playground. Used to train in the dirt, uh, grass field, uh, dirt field in New Orleans where he was at Tulane. And now I think this is seventh year in the NFL. A dude named Tenzel Smart. Um, he helped me uh, get to where I'm at. That was the first guy to really take a chance on me. Um, while he was in college and ended up getting drafted. Uh, and that's 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 my guy. He works. He, when I put him in front of anybody, he go outwork him. So that's that's my dude. Tends out smart. I tell you, Coach, your story is remarkable. Listen, brother, we love you that you're here, and what a great story, man. Yes, sir. You know, what a great story. God bless you. God bless your family. You. We wish you nothing but the success. We're here for you. Whatever you need, you know, you let us know and. Uh, we know what an asset you are to this program we know how important you are to the development of these young men and how you're preparing them for not only football but for life after football and so uh we really appreciate you joining us coach for sure God appreciate bless, you man. brian appreciate you just i really sure. appreciate it i really appreciate y'all having me on here and be able to just talk about football and just talk about Michigan State, man. We're going to bring you Absolutely, back on next man. time to talk about your number one recruit, number one favorite. I'm not I'm not going to forget uh, that. Okay? <laughs> I know I what you're you. talking about. We ain't saying I that name you. right now. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. But we'll, yes, we'll, we'll, after we win the Big Ten Championship, we'll get back to that later, okay? <laughs> we got that. Got that. Got All that. right, Go Coach. Green. Appreciate you, Coach. Thank you. All coach right. BT Jordan, Brandon Jordan. Coach, take care. Go green. All right. I'll tell you, Brandon Jordan, I'll tell yeah. you, he is uh, – what a what an outside the box hire. Yep. What a what a I'm telling you, that is Yeah. I remember when when we uh myself, Corey Robinson, uh we heard that the hire was happening. We kind of sat there, we looked at his resume a bit, we kind of scratched our heads. We're thinking, why has nobody heard this guy before? Right? Like you're thinking, okay, this guy trains all these NFL all pros. His Instagram post here says he's worked with 195 guys. Is it only guys. because other schools won't let NFL I've, players train there? I've, I've tried to find out about this. I know this some is people, crazy. I know some people wanted to hire him as an analyst. So as an analyst, he wouldn't have been able to recruit. He wouldn't have been able to go out there and sell himself or any of that. So like, I guess that, that could have worked for him, but like they wouldn't be maximizing his potential. So it doesn't make sense to kind of limit yourself that way. But yeah, I mean, so the first thing we did was we were perplexed why no one hired him. Then we started to kind of put the word out there that, that we think this is going to be a great hire. And some people were like, oh, you guys are just being really positive. You guys really like the hires the staff makes. And we're like, no, you, you look at this resume, you look at his age, you look at how he's gonna be able to relate with kids. And I will stake my reputation that this will lead to results. This is brilliance. Yeah. This is absolute brilliance. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if, you're, if you're this next generation, if you're coaching this next generation of young men, this is what they want. They want, you know, NFL cred. Yeah. They want street cred. Yeah. They want Kevin Vickerson. Mm-hmm. They want Marco Coleman. Yep. They want Brandon Jordan. Mm-hmm. They want guys that have played in the league, been there, believe can get them to the league. Yep. And, you know, you got to, this is the way this thing, how it's evolved and it's changed. I yeah. mean, 30 years ago, it was you're coming to get an education and you're going to school and and of course that's still part of it. No mm-hmm. question about it. Yeah. Absolutely no question. Yeah. But the world has changed a little bit where yeah. kids are making decisions sometimes, sometimes yeah. not in their best interest. Right. But they're making decisions based on yeah. um, you know, how fast can I get to the league? Who can best prepare me for mm-hmm. the next level? Yeah. And these are the things that you have to take into consideration. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you need to make a hire like this if you're not going to be just needlessly lighting money on fire like some coaches down south that are trying to um, uh, have a quick fix. Like you need something that sets you apart. And a guy like Brandon Jordan can go talk to these guys like David Hicks, Jaden Wayne, Vic Burley, and he can say, hey, these are the 195 people I've coached in the NFL. Wow. These are the Pro Bowls they've made. These are the contracts they have signed. Four of the top five pro football focus pass rushers this year were my clients. And suddenly, um, a quick get rich, get rich quick offer from one of these schools down south. Yeah, it's still kind of appealing, but suddenly your mind starts to go, okay, where's my future going to be best formed? Who's going to best develop me for the next 15 years of my life? Uh, and that's kind of where, if you have a guy like Brandon Jordan, it's kind of a no-brainer for a lot of these guys that want to go ahead and get to the next level. You know, you're absolutely right, Justin. If you're thinking long-term, mm -hmm. you're not looking at the quick dollars yeah. about who's going to prepare me for the next 15 years of my life. Right. And you're able to have those group of advisors in your life to tell you long term this is the answer right um and we're not in a bidding war on money or whatever right that there is no question this is the place to be and uh, you know kudos to coach tucker yeah for reaching outside the box and coming up with a different strategy and really what brandon jordan has done is yeah. remarkable 195 nfl clients right remember he didn't play in the league. Yeah. Right? He wasn't a all pro defensive end for 15 years teaching yeah. teaching his uh, uh, tricks of the trade. Right. I mean, he has developed a reputation as a savant, as somebody that, that, that knows how to teach defensive yeah. end when it comes to hand placement and uh, technique, yeah. bend, stuff. stuff, of, stuff Do you of that know nature. how good you have to be for people that are nine year like NFL all pros? To say, I want you to coach me. To say, I need, I need to learn more from you. Thank you. Yeah, you, you know how That's hard like that... Warren Buffett coming to me and saying, yeah. hey, <laughs> tell me about Spartan Wealth. Yeah. That's, it's that equivalent. Yeah. I mean, it's remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. So, Coach Jordan, I wish you the best of luck. We know you're going to win. God bless. Mel Tuck, we know you're going to win. Tom Ezzo, we know you're going to win. And we're not biased at all, though. So... Don't worry about that. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am Brian Mosalem, your co-host for Inside the Locker Room, along with my co-host, Justin Thin. Thank you for joining us. Good night, everybody. Go green and God bless.